Hello, TikTok. Let's see, mirror my video. How's everyone doing today? I'm um, here today to work on the Invisible People hat. This is the, invi how do I do it? This is the Invisible Woman hat that you saw me make on the lives, um, last couple of lives. This is Invisible Woman. It has a space, maybe if I do it like this, I don't know. It has a space for your hair to come out the back of it. Um, and, um, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I couldn't find the hat when I was actually working on the hat and now I have it. So, but today I'm going to do invisible people, but I'm just getting set up and, um, I'm going to go live on my other platforms as well. So if you don't like my overhead here, you can go to one of those other places, but I'm going to put this up here. And then I'll show you what the Invisible People hat looks like. Let's plug this in real quick. This is actually the Invisible People hat. It starts out just like the Invisible Woman hat, but then it closes off. So it has this gathering up the back and it makes it look like... Um, um, really slouchy without being like a great big slouchy cap. So this is like a one skein, a wonder. Let's see. Am I live over here? It doesn't say on here that, uh, that Betty McDinn is live. I'm live, right? Come on, TikTok. Give it to me. Give me the juice. Yes. I'm only going to stay on tonight until 6.30 because it's a full moon and it's a clear night and the moon is going to rise and it's going to be amazing. So I'm um, just going to get this get this started. I don't know how long I'll be on here. I mean, I, I, I don't know how far I'll get, um, but I'm only going to stay on until 630. And then moon rises at 644. And I'm going to go watch that over the over the ocean. It's like one of my favorite things to do at the beach is... Um, go visit the moon rise it's just it's incredible I can tell it's going to be incredible it was the moon has been so bright the last few nights it's really clear here the weather's nice and um I can't wait so I'm gonna go live on my other platforms and um and then I'll get started So thanks for being here. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for following. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, here we go. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Betty McNitt, and I'm wearing the Invisible Woman hat. And tonight I'm going to work on the Invisible People hat. Looks a little bit different than this hat. I didn't want to wear the Invisible People because it doesn't really have the space for like a bun or something like that. This one's better for when you wear your hair down and you don't care if it gets messed up. So this is Invisible People and this is Invisible Woman. Invisible Woman is open at the top and it has the space for your hair or braids or dreads or bun or whatever. I mean, I think the messy bun beanies kind of put the bun at the top of your head, and that's just not my style. So I'm more of a chignon. I don't know. So maybe somebody who has a good French accent can tell me how to pronounce that word. Chignon. I have no idea how to say it. I can see it in my mind. But this is, yeah, this is the hat. I like to wear this one when I have a bun or something. And then this one I wear when my hair is down. But we're gonna work on this one tonight. This is Invisible People, and the one I'm wearing is Invisible Woman. And I already did that one, so if you want help with it, you can find my YouTube. And if anyone's like good at YouTube and would like to be a virtual assistant for me and help me clean up my YouTube channel, if you wanna go through and watch my YouTubes and chapter them out for me, if you're good at like making thumbnails, Definitely need some help with that because I'm not very good at that. 
Let's see. I wish I could remember what yarn this was that I made this out of, but I don't remember at all. Hold on. Let's see what's going on. Okay. There's people here. Um, but I'm going to use this, the remaining two poems, um, balls of yarn that I have. These two are 100% wool. Um, on the last call, I used this same yarn in different colorways to make this Invisible Woman hat. It's just, this was wool, this is wool and silk. This is wool, and I bought this. I don't know if this is still available, so... I don't know where it can be gotten from if you want some, um, but it is it is lovely. And I had, let me see, I had two of them. I don't think I'll need all two of them for this hat. This was specifically done as a one skein project for Furl's Crochet um, to use one of their yarns with. And if I remember right, it was a DK weight or a worsted weight and had about 100 yards. So you can do this with 100 yards of yarn. Um, these each have a hundred, so these have a hundred and nine. So I could probably do two hats, but we'll see how it goes. Um, uh, I might make the hat a little longer than the pattern says. Shh. Don't tell the designer. <laughs> She's over here breaking our own rules. All right, so this is a invisible people hat. This is a, what does this say to use? 18 stitches says size eight, size I hook. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a J because it just feels big like that to me. Okay, thank you for the likes. Thanks for sharing the live. Appreciate it. Let's see. Did it barf? No, it did not barf. All right, I also have to pull up my pattern over here. I have recently um, re-edited re this pattern and um, made it, let's see, invisible, invisible, um, improved it, made it nicer. When I first started designing, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Um, and I keep learning more and more. So stuff keeps getting better all the time. So let me find invisible people. Here we go. Invisible people hat. So I designed this during COVID-19 in quarantine um, when we were all quarantined. So they were doing their quarantine special where they had like a hook a skein of yarn and then they emailed you all these all these projects and my patterns were among the projects the the patterns that were linked in these emails that they sent out to everyone so that's where these came from and that's why in the pattern i you see the pictures i'm sitting there modeling it myself like a dork um I think I look cute though. Like I use that picture for my profile. <laughs> I think I look cute, but it's not, you know, the typical, um, you know, like professionalism, I guess you would say, if that's such a thing, um, even for me. Uh, so yeah, anyways, there, there you have it. There's me with my scraggly hair. It's interesting. I feel like my hair is even much more brown in those pictures than it even is now. My hair is even much more gray now than it was. And this was only, this was 2020. It was two years ago. Wow. 2020 was two years ago. Seems crazy. Okay, here we go. Invisible People Hat. The pattern's available on my website, bettymcnitt.com. This is the first video I've ever done for it. It starts off just like the Invisible Woman hat. So if you watch me do that one, it's the same, same start. This one gives specific numbers for how many to chain. Um, oh, it says chain 70. And then it says, oh, crap, I'm going to have to update this. <laughs> because it's chain and it should say 
um it should say foundation single crochet all right anyways it's 70 gives you a number of how many to do so i start with the half hitch on my hook and then i bring the bottom tail i have a long tail I use a long tail foundation single crochet and then pull through one, pull through two, take the bottom, this is the tail, up and over, and then the yarn supply, pull through one, pull through two. This is three, this is four. This is five, this is six, this is seven, this is eight, this is nine, this is 10, this is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm gonna, um, I'm going to mark every 20 so I don't lose count. I think an I-cord, um, purple sass, I think for an I-cord you pull through both loops at once. I'm doing a foundation uh, single crochet so I'm pulling through one and then two. I looked for a video of it but I couldn't find it. I could not find one. I found people um, wrapping over like this and then pulling through both like that to do a, a foundation chain but that's not what I'm doing I'm doing I'm coming over and then I'm chaining one and then pulling through two so to me it comes up just like a foundation single crochet I lost count one two three I'm trying to get to 70 four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, you can do it the other way where you chain and then you, um, you know, you pull up. The pattern will still work if you do it the other way. This is just how I do it. And I don't think I made it up, but I haven't found another video about it. But the pattern will still work if you do it a different way. The pattern will also work if you chain, do a foundation chain, and then single crochet across. I just like the edge that this gives a little bit better. And I'm gonna be make I'm gonna be working into that bottom edge and creating the roll at the bottom of this hat. So um, I like I want it to be just a little bit more flexible. Thank you. Now the only um, the only downside is because it's long tail, you can you can run out of yarn on the tail side. That sucks. 
it definitely sucks when that happens. So the pattern, I'm following the Invisible People hat, which is a pattern I wrote, and I just found a mistake in it. Wonderful. I knew I should have um, worked through this again on a live before I put this out into the world, but it's okay. I'll fix it after. Um, and it's calling for 20, but you can also just take the take the foundation single crochet and put it around your head or do it to whatever measurement you want. I lost count already. Let me count and mark another 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Should have gotten one out before I started counting. Okay, let me just dump the rest of these out, or at least a couple more, so they're ready for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Thanks for the follow. Twenty. Yeah, this is just one way to do it. It'll it'll work. The hat will work if you do it the regular way, or even if you um, chain and single crochet. It'll still work. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now what am I supposed to do with this big chunk of blue? Just dangling off the end. And the way that they have the colors connected is just, this is wool yarn and they just have it like felted together. Not how I usually do it. Okay, let's see. Round, uh, okay, at the end of... Oh my gosh, this pattern is so wrong. You can tell I cut and paste from the other pattern. <sighs> well, it does start off the same way as the Invisible People hat or the Invisible Woman hat. Taking care not to twist, join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. There it is right there. Is that it? No, 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 here it is, got buried a little bit. Because I didn't do a slip knot or anything to start it off. Slip, stitch, okay. Chain three. Okay, now this next row, the whole row is linked double crochet. So it starts with um, pulling up a loop in the second chain on the hook and then you pull up a loop in the next stitch and then you pull through two, pull through two. Linked double crochet. So right across the front of that double crochet stitch, there's a bar, you go under that bar and you pull up a loop and then you pull up a loop in the next stitch, pull through two, pull through two. Linked double crochet, L-D-C. Pull up a loop. 
pull up a loop in the next stitch, pull through two, pull through two. We're gonna do this the whole way around. And then this row is gonna be folded in half to create the brim, the rolled brim on the edge of the hat. I wanted it to have a rolled brim like a knitted in the round hat. So that's why I did this roll. I love this yarn. I love when yarn is imperfect and it has slubs and nubs and whatever the heck they're called. I don't know if I'm using the right words. And I love this color of green. I have a tattoo on my back that's this color of green. And I remember when I, um, when I got the tattoo, the tattoo artist kept saying, I said, put a little more yellow in that green. And she was like, that's going to make a really ugly green. And I was like, I like that green. I'm going a little faster tonight than I did for Invisible Woman because um, I'm going to go, I'm only staying on for another hour and I want to go see the moon rise. So I'm rushing a tiny bit. Invisible Woman, Invisible People. The Invisible Woman hat is open in the back with, um, so that you can wear long hair, long braids, a ponytail or a bun in the back of your hair. It's made for people with long hair. And the Invisible People hat, looks like a um it looks very slouchy but it's it's really it's really not a large hat at all it just has that slouchy kind of beanie look the way that it's shaped it like sits on the back of your head not the top Linked double crochet. Well, this stitch is really fun and I used it because when I want, I, I wanted to make this roll and I didn't want to have holes between the double crochet stitches. So that's why I decided to use this stitch instead. Link the stitches together and create a roll that didn't have spaces in it. And um, some of the testers thought, oh, this is a really fun stitch and they wanted to make, you know, use it in, in other places in their work. And um, it just, it behaves a little differently than double crochet. So if you fall in love with linked double crochet and you decide you want to use it in stuff, Make a swatch first. <laughs> Make a swatch. I know, I can feel you rolling your eyes. Make a swatch and test it out first. Linked double crochet. Thanks for the likes. Appreciate it. Yeah, there are different ways to do um, foundation chains and I mean I uh, get this question a lot in my groups I've just found out about foundation single crochet where has this been all my life 
Um, people like to use foundation single crochet when they're making a large, starting with a really large starting chain, and they don't want to, um, you know, count up all those chains and then work a whole single crochet. But not every, um, not every start is appropriate for every type of project. So I don't use foundation single crochet on my blankets because they are too flexible and the work stretches out especially if I'm using a heavier yarn I like to use chunkier yarns and I would never use a foundation single crochet with those yarns because it'll stretch for me now I know plenty of people have done it and they don't have the same issues that I have um, maybe they're using a different method for foundation single crochet um, but yeah, research your techniques before you just jump into one, do a swatch, and make sure that the stitch is gonna behave the way you want it to behave in your project. Don't just do it because it's easier or faster. Although being easier and faster is nice. Linked double crochet. Go into the front of the stitch, pull up a loop. That's like a mini Tunisian row. It's like Tunisian crochet. You know, you pull the loops up all the way across. Hi. This is Invisible People. This is the Invisible People hat. I'm looking at the pattern and it has a mistake. So I'm gonna be posting an update. I don't usually work with really furry yarn, no. I like wool and acrylic. Um, blends like wool and silk. I don't use um, furry yarn. I never use that. I do not enjoy working with the blanket yarns, the chenille yarns that a lot of people, I don't make plushies. So um, I know a lot of people enjoy making plushies. I, I despise that blanket yarn. Honestly, I do not like working with it at all. Life is too short to work with yarn you don't like, so I say get rid of it. Hey, yada yada, how you doing? I'm glad you find my comments interesting. I'm just over here talking to myself. Mm. <laughs> Row two with the chain. No, round two is not a decrease. It's a linked double crochet. Linked double crochet. You can go back and watch the replay of this video and see how I do it. It's a linked double crochet. And the first one is in a chain. It goes into the chain, the turning chain, and then the first stitch. Okay, let's see. Oh, this is twisted. Okay, don't get it twisted. And I mean that in the most literal sense. <laughs> Do not get it twisted. Okay. Now, what does it say to do? Round three. This round is worked catching the back loop of each stitch and the bottom loop of the foundation single crochet. Okay, so it catches the back loop of the stitch, which is this one. First one is this one. 
and then the bottom of the foundation single crochet. If I can bring that more in focus. There we go. Okay, and then it's 11 single crochet. So it's the back loop of the top row and the bottom of the foundation single crochet. And I'm gonna do 11 single crochet like that. So this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, this is seven. Here's where I had that little fuzzy part and I was like, I love yarn that has slubs and nubs. And now here's one and I can't figure out what the heck I'm doing. Okay, I hope that's right. I just have a little fuzzy part right there. Okay, let me see, I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back loop of the row and the bottom of the foundation single crochet, this is nine. And then 10. And then 11. Okay, and we're gonna continue catching both of those loops, but the next instruction is half double crochet, just one, because it's gonna slant up like this. And then double crochet the rest of the way around. You're still catching those two loops. And then the last stitch of the round is going to be half double crochet. So I'm doing double crochet around, I'm catching the front back loop of the top stitch and the bottom of the foundation single crochet and I'm creating a roll. I'm making the invisible people hat. I'm wearing the invisible woman hat and I'm making the invisible people hat. That's the roll. The rest of the hat is easy. This is the most interesting part of the hat. The rest will be boring. I'm catching the back loop of the top stitch and the bottom of the foundation single crochet. The bottom loop, one loop. I'm creating a roll. Thanks for the likes. A little hard to see it's that I'm excited about the moonrise it's a very clear day it's probably still going to be pretty light out when the sun when the moon does come up but the moon has been so bright oh my goodness Holy moly. It's eerie.
back loop of the top stitch and the bottom loop of the foundation single crochet. This yarn is fun. Thanks for the likes. Back loop of the top and bottom of the foundation single crochet. Thank you. Pattern is the Invisible People hat and it's on my website, bettingmagnet.com. Well, don't go buy it until I have the chance to fix row one. I messed up. When I updated it. I'm forming a roll by taking the back loop of the top stitch and catching the bottom of the foundation single crochet that I made. And I'm making a roll at the bottom of the hat, a rolled brim. It's double crochet all the way around. Thanks for the likes, yada yada. This is my tail from my cast on or my starting chain foundation uh, single crochet. I did a long tail foundation single crochet on this. All right, what am I trying to go into here? Okay. I remember when I first learned how to crochet, I think I was seven years old I would just stick the hook anywhere. I didn't know. <laughs> you had to like work into the stitches in a specific way. I just stuck my hook anywhere. I felt like it. I probably worked between the stitches. This thing is going to get in the way. It always does. I mean, try to ignore it, but at the end, it's that tail is useful to um, work in and kind of pull the two sides of the beginning together, where you joined it in the round, and make it make a kind of smoother join, especially if it changed colors on you like mine did. Yeah, I'm going to go to the other side of it now because I think that's where I should be. Yes. Is that right? Okay. 
Okay. Whew. Oh, let me take a break and just breathe. Mm. Chaotic crochet is the best crochet. Yep. I just remembered this last stitch is supposed to be a half double, not a double. One thing I highly recommend is number one, breathing. So <laughs> remembering to breathe. When you, I'm working on something difficult, I often forget to breathe. And I, I have, you know, been in like classes where I can hear the people around me like holding their breath when they're working on something. So remembering to breathe, that's one thing. So I have a habit <clears throat> that I'm trying to like work into my muscle memory that every time I pull my yarn, I take a deep breath so that that helps me remember to breathe. And then I also recommend laying your work down often and breathing and just looking at it and admiring it. Like I'm just freaking loving the blue and the green together. That just is my world, those two colors. I love that green and I love that turquoise. So those colors are making me really happy. Um, yeah, and I'm just noticing if anything looks off. So this is the Invisible People hat. It's uh, my website. I'm Betty McNitt, and it's on my website, bettymcnitt.com. Um, it starts with a foundation single crochet, a row of linked double crochet, and then on the first round in pattern, you work the top and bottom together and you make a roll. I wanted it to have a rolled edge. So here's a completed one. It has a rolled edge. Invisible people hat. So I can see on this one, I did back loop only and gave it some texture. So even though the pattern doesn't say to do that, I'm gonna do that for this one. Okay, so I'm moving on to round four. Round four is a repetitive round that just makes the pattern bigger. So it's 11 single crochet and I'm working into back loop only for pattern. Um, but the pattern does not say to do that. I'm just, it's just something I'm throwing in. Actually, I'm not going to do it over the single crochets. I'm going to do both loops for the single crochet. There's 11 of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then a half double crochet. I'm going into the back loop now, and then double crochet around to the last stitch, and then the last stitch will be half double crochet. Thanks for following. Appreciate it. Oh my gosh, this blue is just so exciting to me. I love it. Remember to breathe. <laughs> the weather's super nice out. It's really bright and sunny. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. 
the storms, the ocean has calmed down. So when the tide is low, the beach is like wide as heck. It's really, really nice here right now. I love it here so much. Not a ton of people. It is a three-day weekend, so there, there are a few people here. There were some people this week on the beach when it was in the 70s a couple days ago, but I mean, it is just incredible. I was outside the other night. I go down to the beach at night a lot of the time um, after I get off my lives. I'll go down to the beach and um, I like going for moonrise when the moon rises like and you know in the evenings in the early evenings I I like going down there as a habit and sitting and watching the moon come up and um, I was down there the other night and there was nobody out there I mean it was just me on the whole beach and um it was incredible. The moonlight was so beautiful. It was sparkling off the water and you could see like the luminescence in the water. It was, it was so incredible. It was really beautiful. And I was the only person there. Thanks for the likes and follows. I appreciate it. This turquoise is just like making me feel so good. This yarn is called um, Poems of Wool from Wisdom Yarn. And I don't know if it's available anymore, but that's what it is. I, I'm saying I don't know if it's available anymore because I go I shop at webs from time to time and I always go in their back room or I go when they have their sale and um, I buy the clearance stuff and the stuff that's discontinued just really terrible as a designer to do that because people want to make the thing that you designed with the same yarn that you use but I mean, it is what it is. I wasn't always trying to be a crochet anything. I was just minding my business. <laughs> okay, and this is the last stitch in the round. So it's going to be a half double crochet. And then I'll, I'm starting the next round, 11 single crochet. So I just work it in a spiral. I don't do the join in a join with a slip and chain up. I just don't do that. Um, I did it for the first round. I think that makes that roll a little neater, but for the rest of the project, I don't do it. 11 single crochet and then one half double crochet and then double crochet around to the last stitch. So see what's happening. It's, it's going down, right? It's creating that like gathered up. The single crochet stitches are where the hat like gathers up in the back. So makes it like, um, I guess like a little bit more of like a bonnet style. I guess I would call this a bonnet. Let's see. Making the invisible people hat. Oh wait, hold on, because I'm doing back loop only. So that half double and double need to be back loop only. It's the Invisible People hat. It's a pattern I designed, it's on my website. BettyMcNitt.com, Invisible People hat. I'm wearing the Invisible Woman hat and I'm making the Invisible People hat. I designed this hat during um, the pandemic. Oh, and she asked me what needle am I using? I'm using a Furls Odyssey crochet hook. It is a J hook, which I believe is six and a half millimeter hook. 
This J hook right here, this white one, might be my all time favorite hook that I use. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why I gravitate to a J hook. And, um, but I do, I love the furls. I, in addition to being a crochet designer, I am also a registered somatic movement therapist. And I, what that means is I, you know, take care of my body and I use ergonomic hooks um, so that I don't hurt myself from crocheting. I mean, I crochet a lot, hours every day. So I have to use an ergonomic hook that protects my hands, protects my body. And I love the Odysseys. I resisted buying them for a while because I thought, oh man, I lose crochet hooks like, you know, so easily. And then, and I, you know, every time I stand up, the thing drops on the floor and I thought I will lose that. Um, but yeah, I have just grown to love them and rely on them. And I think they're a really wonderful product. For me, it's worth it because of how much time I spend crocheting. Um, what the holy heck is going on here? Look at this, how they join this yarn is like it's wool. So they just join it by felting it together. But it's got a big old extra piece. So I'm just going to cut it. I think I might just work over it as I as I work, but I don't recommend only working over your ends on your projects. You should weave everything in. And I, I do not tie magic knots. Magic knots are not magic. That is a lie. They do come undone. I don't care how many people say I've never had one come undone. You don't know that. You give your stuff away and you sell your stuff. So you don't know where all those magic knots ended up. And if they come undone or not. It's just not worth it. You know, and it only takes one. And they can and do come undone. I've seen it. I feel the same way about starting a starting a granny square blanket or a star blanket or something um, from the middle with a magic loop or magic circle or whatever it's called. Um, I think that's a good technique for smaller projects or amigurumi, but I don't think it's a good technique for a blanket or a hexagon sweater or something of that nature. If you are going to use it to start, definitely go around more than once and leave a long tail and weave it back in around a few times because that is not secure for a garment or a blanket. It will come undone. I know there are people that are not going to like what I'm saying. But I said it. I'm on the third repeat of row four. So it would be four, five, six. I'm on row six. And it says to only go to row 11. So we'll see how far I get. I'm going to get off in 30 minutes. And go watch the moon rise. Isn't it though?
Somebody once told me to stop making hats for their family members because they were embarrassed by the bright colors. <laughs> she said, don't make any hats for her husband because he wears them and it's embarrassing to her. <laughs> I was like, First of all, I can't believe that. And second of all, I can't believe you would say that to me right to my face. Don't make them any more hats. You could just politely put it in the closet and leave it there. <laughs> Honestly. Sadly, I'm extremely sensitive and that had me, that comment took me out for a while. It was a really nice hat that I made and I put a lot of effort into it and made it, made used colors that I thought that person would really like. And I'm sure they wore the hat because they liked it but they embarrassed their spouse. <laughs> yeah, so I stopped making things for, it did really hurt me, um, but it was a long time ago and I don't, I don't care as much anymore, but thankfully I had, uh, uh, one day I was just like at my mom's and my sister, walks in with all her kids and her little boy who was like I don't know maybe six at the time um and he bounced in and he was wearing one of my hats that I had made for my son years before it was a knitted hat and it had you know it was like a looked like a jester hat with three um like prongs coming off of it and um and I said, oh, I, I didn't realize I handed that hat down and I didn't know where it ended up. And my sister said, oh, really? You made that? She said, we were wondering where it came from because it's we love that hat and it really suits his personality. And I was like, oh, um, yeah, I made that for Teague when he was little, my son. And... Uh, and my niece said, you know, Aunt Beth, will you make me one? And then that got me started on a um, a journey to, like, write up the pattern and publish the pattern. But um, they also, you know, I, I said to them at the time, I said, you know, I stopped making stuff for people because somebody told me it was embarrassing to wear it. And they were like, oh, no, we treasure the stuff you make. So then I started making things for people again. But I just started to be more um, selective about who I made what for and if I made stuff for people at all. And I stopped doing the thing where I made all my Christmas gifts and things like that. And I started to just be more selective I really enjoy everything that I make and really give, you know, from the heart and not out of obligation to people. And now when people, if people ask me for things, like, first of all, when people ask for things, like, I really have to love them to make, you know, make something for them. So if somebody I love asks me for something, like, that makes me feel good. But if somebody you know, just, hey, make me, are you going to make me one? I will say, I only make things for people that I love. So if you get a handmade gift from me, you will know that I love you. And I just settle it that way. <laughs> and um, yeah, the things that I do make are extremely special now because of that. I spend most of my time designing and writing patterns, so I don't make a lot of gifts and things anymore. Um, so that makes it even more special. If you get a, a handmade gift from me, it is truly a gift from the heart. 
I love this green as well. I know this green is not going to be everyone's style or cup of tea, but I love it. Yeah, I mean, I don't really like to put people in their place, but I am. It is kind of annoying sometimes when you're sitting there making something and somebody that, you know, isn't isn't an important figure in your life says, are those for me? Is that for me? Or when are you going to make me one? Or, you know, starts starts with the expectation. It just leaves a very bad taste in my mouth. I didn't have all my lights on. The sun's going down. It's going to be a beautiful moonrise. I don't remember what row I'm on now. I think I just blew through the last row without stopping to talk about it. It says rounds four through 11. So once seven rounds of this. I don't know how many I'll get out of this ball of yarn. I have another ball of yarn. It's not the exact same, but it's it's close and it'll look good. It'll look good. They'll look good together. It'll be fine. Yeah, and I don't sell my work either. That, um, I don't, I don't make things and sell them hardly ever. I don't, you know, like make, uh, yeah, I don't do that. I don't take a lot of requests or any requests, I don't think. Maybe from my daughter. My daughter said, make me something. does feel really good when my daughter wears the stuff I make. <laughs> I make her scarves and hats and things all the time. Sometimes she takes them. Um, they weren't really meant for her. <laughs> She's done that to me. <laughs> she takes the favorites, she takes the best ones. <laughs> This is the invisible people hat, the invisible people hat. And I'm wearing the invisible woman hat. They're similar. They have a very similar structure. They have these rows of single crochet going across the back of them to kind of give them a, a bonnet type of shape. Um, the invisible woman hat is open in the back for long hair or braids or a bun or a ponytail. And the invisible people hat is closed off at the top. So let's see. Let me figure. This is three, four, five, six, seven. I'm on round seven going into. Uh, actually, that was round seven. Now I'm going into round eight. So it's all, these rows are just repetitive, double crochet in the back loop. It does, the pattern doesn't give the instruction to go in the back loop. I just wanted to have a little bit, I wanted to have that little line of texture just to give the hat a little more interest, but you don't have to do that. 
You can work under both loops. Doesn't make the hat any bigger or smaller or anything like that. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for dropping in. Thanks for following. Appreciate it. These are just dyed and gone to heaven colors for me. I'm just, I'm waiting for the purple. It's got purple that's going to come in and I just, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm in love. I'm just sitting here waiting for it to show up. <sighs> Purple sass, that lady was just a yes. Jealousy was the defining characteristic of that relationship. I will say that. Don't think I'll finish on this live tonight, but um, I'll pick it back up wherever I leave off. Replays will be on my uh, YouTube channel. If you ever want to go back and make this one and want to work along with me, I'm going to do the whole hat. Thanks for following. Appreciate it. Ooh, tomorrow is Monday already. Uh, next week, I will be releasing the six-day hexagon cardigan. I'm so excited about it. It's, um, it's in the final testing stages now. I had a few people from my Facebook group. Um, who are testing it and working on it. And then I had a couple people over here on TikTok that had made some really favorable, excited sounding comments on my videos about the Hex Cardi. So I just gifted them the draft to work through and um, they've been posting progress. So that has been really fun to see. So if you are scrolling around on TikTok and you see the six day hexi hexagon cardigan around, um, that's why, but the pattern is coming next week. October 19th is my scheduled release date. So if you would like to be notified when that's released, you can check the link in my bio and um, follow that to the page and, and sign up for an email reminder when that comes out.
Oh my gosh. I love the purple. I'm, I just love it. I love purple with green. I had this crazy thing for a while there where I was collecting this yarn that looked like aliens to me. It was green and purple. <laughs> I was like, I love it. It looks like aliens. Yeah, I think I need to correct this pattern because I actually, I can see in the hat in the photo that I worked into the back loop. So I think it was supposed, it's supposed to say working into the back loop only. Yeah, because I have that, I have that in the abbreviation. So I think I messed up this pattern a little bit when I updated it. And I did, I did some cut and paste from the other pattern and messed myself up. <sighs> I'm constantly making mistakes in front of everyone. Ay, mm -hmm. <laughs> ay, ay. Detail orientation, Betty. I love purple. Oh my goodness. I love this color of purple so much. Would you look at that? Oh, oh my gosh. Such a beautiful color of purple. And then the blue and the green. Oh, this is a special ball of yarn. They must have only had one. I, cause I had four balls of this yarn and I had four different colors. And usually when I buy just random balls of yarn that I think are pretty, I usually buy two. If I don't know what I'm going to do with it, I will usually buy two. And I only bought one. But I have a second one that is kind of sort of similar to it that could be worked along with it. Um, so I feel like for that reason, I they must have only had one or I would have bought a second one. I don't know what I was doing. Maybe I didn't have a lot of money that day and I couldn't decide. So I bought one of everything. Let's see, what row am I on? Because I'm not stopping, because I'm not joining with a slip and chaining up and I'm just working in a spiral, it's like endless. So there's, I have to remind myself to take breaks. But look at those colors, would you please? Look at those colors, look at that purple. Oh my gosh. This is the other ball that I have. See, it's similar enough, it's gonna, that's gonna be bright, but it's similar enough if I want to make this hat bigger. I mean, I think I'll need this to finish to finish this hat, actually, but we'll see. Supposedly, it only takes 100 yards of yarn. What's it, what hook did I use in this? Yeah, I used worsted weight and a J hook for this, and it says 94 yards is the amount of yarn that it took. Hi, thank you. I just love the colors. I love this purple and I love this green and it reminds me of aliens. This one has a little bit brighter green and darker purple. The That green and that purple together more reminds me of aliens than these. this green and this purple. 
This is like more springy, but I do love it. I love it. It's called Poems, Wisdom from Wisdom Yarn. It's 100% wool. I don't know if you can get it anymore. This one is called Baltic. The name of the color is Baltic. And this one doesn't have a color name on it. It says color 578. Oh, it feels really nice, like squishy and warm. Let me see what this is, Baffin Island. That was this. That was this. The browns and the greens. And then I don't know what happened to the label for this. This was two different balls of yarn. Which you probably wouldn't know unless I, it was, you know, pointed out. Well, it does seem like I'm taking a break, and so it's almost 6.30, and I do want to go outside and see the moon, so I'm going to fix the little errors that I saw in this pattern tonight and re-release it, so if you already have a copy, you'll get a notice that it's been updated, and if you don't have it yet, you can just wait a couple hours and then and buy the new version and not have to um, translate those little goober mistakes that I made. Lovely. Let me see, let me flip this. Let me bring you all down. Okay. Thanks so much for being um, with me live tonight, friends. It was um, fun spending this time with you crocheting, and I will maybe see you tomorrow or in a couple of days and finish up this hat. Bye.